If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. My fellow book lovers, welcome back to A Book Binger. I want you guys to make sure that you're subscribed to my podcast. Every week I come on here and I talk about which book I'm reading. I take recommendations from all of you guys and some of my dear friends are going to start coming on the show as well and talk about their thoughts and ideas of the books that they recommend to me. So don't miss out on this great opportunity to get in a book that you can't stop talking about and let's talk about it together. Welcome to A Book Binger. I'm Shelby, and I'm a girl who's going to binge books instead of Netflix. Let's get started on this week's book. Another week, another book. This week, I read The Mothman's Curse by Christy Hayes. This book was something that I actually was recommended from a friend. Her name is Noelle, and... Christy is actually, or correction, was one of her co-workers and wrote this book. So that's something that was really cool. I'm going to read you guys the book description to kick this off. When Josie and her brothers uncover a haunted camera, the Mothman legend becomes a terrifying reality that threatens their entire town in this spooky and action-filled novel. Josie may live in the most haunted town in America, But the only strange thing she's ever seen is the parade of oddball customers that comes through her family's auction house each week. But when she and her brother discover a Polaroid camera that prints pictures of the ghost of a local recluse, John Goodrich, they are drawn into a mystery dating back over a hundred years. A desperate spirit, cursed jewelry, natural disasters, and the horrible specter of Mothman all weave in and out of the puzzle that Josie must solve to break the curse and save her own life. And I also wanted to kind of do something a little different at the beginning. I wanted to read you guys the first segment of the book because it kind of explains who Mothman is just a little bit for those who aren't familiar with the curse of Mothman. So starting off this book, it says, When you live in the most haunted town in America... You've heard most every ghost story that's ever been spun about your corner of the world. The tumble-down houses, the shadowed cemeteries, and wandering souls. Whether you believe the stories or not, you respect them. Just in case. Plenty of places claim to be the most haunted, but Athens, Ohio has something those other places don't. Mothman. He's every bit as repulsive as he sounds. A dark, hulking figure. Seven feet tall, with ragged, brittle wings and burning red eyes. Technically, he belongs to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where dozens died when the Silver Bridge collapsed in 67. Scores of people spotted Mothman in the year before the disaster. No one knew if he was there to help or harm. He's been called a ghost, an alien, and a monster. I've always thought Death Omen described him best. Point Pleasant is 40 miles from Athens. Mothman was never ours to claim, and I was glad. Until this spring, when Mothman claimed Athens instead. And I actually didn't realize this, but Mothman is a bigger figure than in just this book. There's actually a movie called The Mothman's Curse. And as that little bit explained, he originates in... West Virginia. And as it described him as the seven foot tall, pretty much just giant moth man, he wreaked havoc mostly with natural disasters was where he was most seen. 
But he also just really reveled in the fact that these people were dying, which is unfortunate and monster-like. So if this is something that you guys like to read, I would recommend going ahead and pulling this out. It's not horror at all. And there is a bit of mystery to it, which I really enjoyed because I do like reading about mystery. But it definitely did have that child perspective. It, the main character, she's 12 years old, and her brothers are 10 and 7. So it has that childlike feel. They're running around their town, doing the best that they can without the adult's help. If that's also something you enjoy, then this is great for you. For me personally, it was maybe a little bit too childlike. Um, not saying that it didn't have the mystery aspect that I enjoyed, but sometimes I'm not in the mood to read about 12 year old girls solving mysteries. However, even though it was about this 12 year old girl and her little brothers, I couldn't seem to put it down because I did want to figure out why John Goodrich was such an important figure in the book. Like it mentioned, he was this neighbor who was a recluse. Not really a neighbor, but he was just more of this old man who was kind of a legend for this disaster that had happened. And he kept popping up in that Polaroid camera. And it didn't really quite explain it until about the middle what was going on. So that's why I was interested in the beginning was to figure out who this man was. And then his character started to develop a lot more, which kept me interested until the very end. The very end of the book, it did have a lot of suspense as Mothman starts to appear. And I really enjoyed that too. I thought the way that Christine wrote this book had a really good outline. There was a lot of character explanation going on. There was a lot of main characters, I would say, as well. And so she kept a really good outline of who did what and specifically why. I don't know if I would really recommend this to everybody to read just because it isn't something that I probably would have picked out myself, honestly. It was a fun read to be able to just dive into a recommendation of a friend. But again, probably not something I would have picked up at the library if I looked at it or if I was just browsing my Amazon books. Probably something that wouldn't really catch my eye. However, if you're in the mood for a light read, it was super easy to get through. I finished it in maybe a day and a half. This is a really good book to pick up if you don't want something spooky, or sorry, if you want something spooky, but not really scary. That's what my friend Noelle said that she really liked about it, is that it had that Halloween feel, and she wanted something spooky, but not entirely scary. So thank you so much, Noelle, for bringing this book up. It was a really good, easy read, and if you guys want to have something like that, go out and read this book. So kind of taking a step back from this book, The Mothman's Curse, I was thinking about what kind of mystery books or kind of thrillers or scary books do I look for? What aspects am I searching for when I look for a book like that? And I was really into murder mysteries last year specifically. It had to have a realistic atmosphere. It couldn't be mythical and it couldn't be otherworldly, but that was what I was drawn to when I was looking for mystery. And it had to be murder mystery, of course, right? Because it's just the thing that people do now, <laughs> which is kind of messed up. And my husband thinks I'm insane for liking that. So... I might be just a twinge insane because it is. If you think about it, why would I be interested in solving this murder case and having all of these details about why the murderer killed this person this way and what their motive was and 
and their life and because it always goes into their life, right? So that was me. That was what I was into. But there's so many other books that have like otherworldly, like aliens and monsters and there's always the vampires. I was into the vampires when I was a teenager and witches and you know there's so many other things that could be considered mystery and spooky and scary so I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are on that what kind of books do you look for especially with this October season are you looking for a Halloween book are you reading one currently share those with me I'd love to know what you guys are looking for in those kind of books 